All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the equation 25 to the power of x minus 5 to the power of x is equal to 20. So to solve this equation, I'm going to first start by subtracting 20 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get 25 to the power of x minus 5 to the power of x minus 20 is equal to 0. Now, 25 to the power of x, I can rewrite this as 5 squared to the power of x. So I have this minus 5 to the power of x minus 20 is equal to 0. And now from here, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. And a to the power of m times n, I can rewrite as a to the power of n times m. So if a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, then a to the power of n times m should equal a to the power of n to the power of m. So phi to the power of 2 to the power of x is going to equal phi to the power of x to the power of 2. Now this minus phi to the power of x minus 20 is equal to 0. And now I'm going to let phi to the power of x is e equal to y, so I get y squared minus y minus 20 is equal to 0. Now, to solve this, I'm going to be using the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is negative 1, and c is negative 20. So I get y equals negative negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 1 squared, which is positive 1, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 20, all over 2a. So 2 times 1. And this is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 80 over 2 which is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 81 over 2. And the square root of 81 is equal to 9. So I get y is equal to 1 plus or minus 9 over 2. Now this gives me two solutions. I get y equals 1 plus 9 over 2, and y equals 1 minus 9 over 2. So 1 plus 9 is 10, and 10 divided by 2 is 5, so I get y equals 5 as one solution. And 1 minus 9 is negative 8. Negative 8 over 2 is negative 4, so y equals negative 4 is another solution. Now from here, remember how we let 5 to the power of x equal to y. So this means I get two solutions. 5 to the power of x is equal to 5, and 5 to the power of x is equal to negative 4. So, let's look at this equation over here. 5 to the power of x equals negative 4. Well, we can't take the power of a positive number and turn it into a negative number, meaning this equation has no solution. And for 5 to the power of x equals 5, to solve this, what most people do is, for other exponential equations, we would have to take the log and do a bunch of other stuff. But as over here, we could just see 5 to the power of 1 is going to equal 5 because anything to the power of 1 is itself. So this is my solution. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the equation 7 to the power of x is equal to 70. So before we start on our solution, let's notice that this is an exponential equation and x is an exponent which is the variable we're solving for. So, let's just try to plug in a number. Let's start with 1. So we have 7 to the power of 1, and this is equal to 7. Now, let's go one higher. Let's go 7 to the power of 2. This is equal to 49. And now let's go one higher. Let's go 7 to the power of 3. This is equal to 349. So notice how we're trying to find what value of x to, that we should take the power of 7 
to equal 70, but even the number 3 is much results in a number much higher than 70, meaning the value of x is going to be a decimal somewhere in between 2 and 3. So, now to actually solve for x, my equation is 7 to the power of x is equal to 70. And what I'm first going to do, and what I recommend doing for any exponential equation such as this, is taking the log on both sides. And the reason that you should do this is because now you can use the property log a to the power of b. I can move this b to the front, so I get b times log a. Log a to the power of b is equal to b times log a. And the reason this property is so useful is because before, x was an exponent, and it's really hard to solve for x in its previous state. But now I can move x to the front, and it's going to be an actual term. So now I get x times log 7 is equal to log 70. Now, log 70 is the same thing as log of 7 times 10. And another property of logarithms is that if I have something in form log a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. So log of 7 times 10 is going to equal log of 7 plus log of 10. So now from here, what I'm going to do is divide both sides by log 7. Because we obviously want to isolate x, so the only way to do that is to get rid of this log 7. So then these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to log 7 plus log 10 over log 7. And I can rewrite this as log 7 over log 7 plus log 10 over log 7. Now log 7 and log 7 cancel out. So I get x is equal to 1 plus log 10 over log 7. And if you guys already didn't know, log 10 is actually equal to 1. So now I get x is equal to 1 plus 1 over log 7. And this is my answer.